G'day, this is Ash for Kapow. Uh, on this Australia Day special, and otherwise known for some people as Invasion Day or Survival Day, and the reason that I mention that is because we're here with Luke Pearson from Indigenous X and the senior digital producer for NITV. We're having a chat today about Aboriginal culture and Aboriginal comic books which have appeared throughout time. Uh, Luke, welcome along to Kapow. How are you Thanks going? Me. Very well. How's yourself? Very well, very well. Um, it's important to know, and this wasn't something that I wasn't really aware of, that there are actually some Indigenous comics or Indigenous comic book characters that have appeared throughout time over the years. And yeah, there's a lot more than I realised when I started. I thought I'd find six or seven and ended up with a list of about 20, I think. so. It was a fascinating article. Mm. It was fantastic. And the list seems to keep growing and it's good it's really important that we've got this list actually up there and happening now because you didn't really find anything like this list up until you started to research no well that's you know whenever you start a new article you're like has someone actually done this before and there were a few that would mention two or three or you know talking about another issue and just an off-handed reference but there wasn't a good comprehensive list that I could find and the moment I started you know anything you put out online and you guys would know making videos for YouTube the commenters are quick to let you know anything you got wrong yeah um, so I put it out there in the hopes that people would come and say oh you missed one here's another one here's another one so I expect we'll be updating this article you know, every month or two for the foreseeable future and hopefully not just with old ones that we missed but new ones that are being created Excellent. And if you're watching this and you have one to add, we're going to give you the details a little bit later on to add to the list as well and to get it in contact with Luke. Now, comic books are a fantastic place to grow the imagination and to go into another world. Do you think comic books are the ideal place to educate and also maybe promote uh, Aboriginal heritage and culture? Yeah, well, and any range of topics. And I think especially difficult topics for kids. You know, we think so much about how do we educate kids and before I did this stuff I used to actually be a primary teacher and say making learning cool for kids mm. is that mm. infinite challenge um, but the moment you know you can create that immersive world that you're in and, and you follow that journey of the characters and deal with their day-to-day -day struggles and learn about their background I mean, when I think about you know my own early views on politics on race on culture a lot of it came from rap music a lot of it came from comic books a lot of it came from movies and so I think and even still now, you know, a, a lot of what I get comes from watching YouTube videos, comes from reading articles online that aren't traditional education, aren't documentaries, but are just pop culture mm. that has this awesome little bit of trivia or this awesome bit of insight that expands my mind. And so I think it's, it's brilliant. One of the first or one of the earliest reported Aboriginal characters in a comic book was Willy Willy. Tell us about that, and it's fascinating. It's way back 1943. Yeah, the and again, the earliest one I can find. If you've got an earlier one, please let me know. We'd love to add it to the list. Um, but yeah, this little Aboriginal boy, so was it Molo the Mighty, mm. um, an alien who crash lands to Earth. So very, I think a lot of the early superheroes had that Superman style alien crashing to Earth. Yeah. Um, and Willy Willy is you know, very much a, a caricature of that day. Mm. You know, got, he's got the afro, he's got the big red lips, he's got the butt he taught Molo how to speak English. Mm. And so, yeah, it's that really interesting contrast. And you can see in the article, he's sitting on the shoulders. And I spoke, the person who put me onto that one said, like, he was usually sitting on his shoulders. Yeah. So yeah. for some reason, this big alien superhero had beaten up all the bank robbers and the bad guys, this little Koori kid sitting on his shoulder the whole way talking to him. And yeah, I, I just think that's that's really interesting. And it's that mix of, like I say, you know, you look at the imagery today, and like, that's a pretty racist caricature. Mm. That was mm. pretty popular at the time, but... Mm. Mm. There were some redeeming characteristics, like he, this little kid spoke English well enough to teach him English. And yeah. so a lot of representation of Aboriginal people at the time was very much the noble savage in the bush sort of stuff. And so, yeah, to, to see that mix come through in these characters is, it's hard to try and get into the head of writers... Yeah, not Aboriginal writers, in 1943, what he would have been thinking about Aboriginal people, what he would have wanted to put out for his audience. But yeah. for that little Aboriginal kid who was born in 1938, you know, 1935, reading that... to be that, represented. That's, where else was he going to see someone of himself you know, fighting crime with a superhero you know, and teaching him English, like having a, a valuable role. Yeah. So it's, it's very easy, and I'm, I'm the first to go, yeah, it was shocking. Like you look at it, you're just like, oh, that's cringeworthy. Yeah. But for its time and place, it still had importance. It still had value. And, and it would have been groundbreaking as yeah, well. Yeah, that's right. And I think a lot of these ones, you know, even through the early 80s, you still, for young Aboriginal kids growing up, there wasn't much out there for them. Yeah. One of them I remember, and I, we were just having the chat before, mm. I didn't realise was actually an 
Aboriginal version of the Phantom. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, we're talking about Condom Man or maybe Condo Man to some. Once I read the article and I saw Condom Man, instantly it came back to me about who Condom Man was. And I remember Condom Man, but it almost seems like a bit of a piss take. Yeah, well, I think there was a bit of tongue-in-cheek about it. And I think that was important because that at the time, mid-80s, was trying to talk about the stigma of STDs, HIV, which was, you know, a huge fear there. Mm. And actually, it came from Arnie Gracelyn Smallwood, was an Aboriginal health worker up in Queensland, and her and Ab- other Aboriginal health workers were like, how can we get the message out? At the time, for those of us old enough to remember, there was the um, Grim Reaper. At first, only gays and IV drug users were being killed by AIDS. But now we know every one of us could be devastated by it. Bowling people over yeah, and falling, like, Reynolds. you know, and the, and those fear campaigns that sadly Australia, most of the things we talk either fear or insult, you know, you toss it, put that in the bin, drink and drive, you're a bloody idiot, speed, and you go, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> whereas they were like, that's not really resonating with, with Aboriginal people. What's something that we can put out there that will tell that story and break down that stigma? Yeah. Um, and so I think it really came for the right reasons. And I said, yeah, you yourself remember it, you know, 30 odd years, years later, so it, it yeah. did what it needed to do at the time and the phantom you know growing up like my dad loved the phantom as a kid we all loved the phantom as a kid there's something about the phantom that resonates i think with a lot of aboriginal people so he mm. was the obvious superhero to emulate mm. um and yeah I, I think if you're going to make condom man you inherently know it's a little bit tongue-in-cheek but yeah. for whatever reason it, it worked yeah, yeah and he's yeah. still around today aboriginal characters throughout comics they've been peppered out through time but it seems like Mid to late 80s may have been the golden era, I guess. Yeah, yeah um, there was certainly a, a huge influx. I mean, on my list, it goes uh, 1943 straight to, I think, 81, mm. and then nothing until 86. Yeah. And then between 86, 88, 89, there is, there's you know, seven or eight of them come from that period. And the best I can work out, Crocodile Dundee, mm. 1986, had an Aboriginal character and a lot of interest in Australia that came from it, yeah. and the 1988 bicentennial celebrations and Aboriginal protests to them, which were you know, unprecedented at the time. There were like tens of thousands of people marching about the 88 ones, and that would have received international attention at the time. Mm. Mm. And so that, yeah, the comic book writers of the day, and they're going, oh, there's, there's something in this, there's a story I can tell. And you know, like you said about comics being a great vehicle to talk about culture, to talk about heritage, like you think about comics like the X-Men, which has Bishop and Shard and Gateway from the list. That was a direct analogy for the civil rights movement of the time when it was created. Yeah. And so to expand that, to talk about racism, to talk about culture, to talk about, was not a far reach for the, the writers who wanted to go in that way. Mm. Um, you know, I said a lot of the writers, I think they knew the word Aboriginal, they knew the word dream timing. Yeah. And off they went with that, that's with it. that Let, knowledge. Let's see what well, we can get from that. Yeah, that's it. Um, we, we go through time. There's been some through the 90s mm. and the noughties, and, but we've actually been able to get a series. The international community has accused us of violating human rights. But these creatures are not human. We do not share the same DNA. We don't know exactly what they are. This only reaffirms this government's commitment to keep these subhumans within the zone. Can we just accept that they are not sub anything, that people? What you're really talking about is the forcible removal of innocent people from their homes. The TV show Clever Man has been revolutionary and I think it, the first time in that sort of forum we've been able to see you know, Aboriginal spirituality, analogies for racism, for modern um, and written, created, produced by Aboriginal people. Yeah. And so, you know, like I said, I think the major flaw in a lot of the characters that we see as well, it was great for that little kid you know, reading those comic books. It wasn't great for the Aboriginal writer or artist who wanted to write comic books because mm. there was not a job for them. Mm. Um, and so now we're actually starting to see those Aboriginal creatives take ownership of their stories, and yeah. that's other level. And I saw a few episodes of that as well, and it was it was quite good, quite yeah. enjoyable. Yeah. And we, I believe it's been signed on for another yes. season? Yes, so Which they is... were writing season two late last year, yep. um, hopefully in production soon, so we can keep our fingers crossed that'll be coming out soon. 
Marvel's probably one of the more recognised uh, creators and distributors of, of comic books in the world. And even they've had their swipe or a take or a go at creating an Aboriginal character or comic book, uh, which was Aboriginal gods. Thoughts? Yeah, I didn't get to actually read the comic book, which was frustrating. A lot of following the threads online, you can find snapshots or a, you know, a panel, but actually getting your hands on some of the comic books was really hard. But yeah. um, it was this random website about superhero religions that I found the reference to the gods and apparently it was mentioned in the very early 80s in a Thor comic which makes sense you know as guardian gods talking about other realms of other cultures gods and tying them in yeah um but I think you know the big difference and what really sort of floored me when I was reading it is like these aren't relegated to the era of mythology and legends and stories that have been adapted like aboriginal spirituality still exists so it was kind of the equivalent for me looking at it, it was like well you know marvel would you go down the jesus superhero character book would you mm. go down that you know that path and so i can see why they did it and there's part of me like they look pretty cool yeah. um, so yeah. you know and they've got you know uh shape shifters and move between dimensions and super strength and you know ancient gods on par with the norse gods and but yeah, they're actual characters, like they aren't invented. Yeah. Um, so there's the Rainbow Serpent, which people would know. There's Bayami, which is a central creation figure on the East Coast, Aramul, and um, I think there's like six or seven of them. And I didn't recognise all of them because they're scattered around Australia. But like I said, I knew a few where it's like, that's that's the actual name, that's the actual character. Yeah. Um, so, and coming out in the late 80s, it was sort of like, where... You sort of beg the question. Where, where did, you, did you get that? Well, yeah. people nowadays who want to find out about this stuff there's not that much readily available information. Mm. Um, a lot of it, there are stories where you've got to go and hear those stories from the people who have the right to tell those stories, and that's you know, traditionally how it's, how it's meant to be. Mm. Um, but there's limited bits of info online, but they, they did their research. I don't know if there was Aboriginal involvement or consultation or if they just found an old book and just lifted it straight from it. Yeah. Um, so like I said, it's one that didn't sit all that well with me. Yeah. Um, but I can see where, where they were coming from with already having what they consider to be myths and legends more so than you know, active religions and pulling it into that space. Yeah, it'd be so, a great read. It'd be fantastic if you have a copy by all means, Yeah, please. I was going to say I would love to know how they actually treat the characters. Yeah. So all it was was a description on the Aboriginal, uh, on the comic book religions website that gave a bit of a description, but there wasn't any panels, there wasn't any frames, there wasn't any real storylines. So mm. I'd, I'd love to know if they did them justice. There was a television show in the 1974, was it? 73. 73, yeah. basically black. Mm -hmm. And there was a superhero skit which was created for that television show. Uh, probably not very appropriate these days. In fact, it might be a derogatory comment, but the, the skit was called Super Boom. Strange visitor from an olden tribe who came to the city possessing powers far beyond those of mortal curries. Faster than a killer boomerang and able to leap over tall gum trees in a single bound. Superbong uses his secret identity as mild-mannered Aboriginal ex-boxing champion Lionel Mouse to fight a never-ending battle against racism wherever it may be found. Hi guys, seen any racism around? Not today, bud. Oh, looks like someone's in need of help from the Eiffel Abo. I think I'll race into the toilet of this hotel and change. What's up, bud? They don't allow blacks in that pub. And that's still a reality. Yeah. There's a lot of pubs that don't let Aboriginal people in. Yeah. Um, it's something we hear in the media, you know, frighteningly often. Um, but to have, like, that so much in your face and making fun of a practical reality that a lot of Aboriginal people were dealing with. Mm. And we talk about how great comic books are for a way to get those really hard topics out. Mm. Comedy, music, you know, art forms mm. uh, are so powerful as well. And yeah, it's to have one of our earliest Aboriginal superheroes is this parody of really just smacking the country in the face and yeah. saying, wake up to your racism like this is... That's why we couldn't have an Aboriginal superhero. Yeah. You wouldn't yeah. let him in the pub to get changed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So uh, it's just, it was brilliant. It's, it's an eye-opening clip. Good morning. I am a human being. Cut! Now listen, you guys. These are proud and sensitive people, okay? Okay. They've had a pretty rough time, but we're going to start treating them as human beings, right? Right. Right. Cue the bong. Just so revolutionary at the time that that was actually written by Aboriginal people. Yeah. And an all Aboriginal sketch comedy show. 
Um, so, you know, when they played white characters, they'd put on like a, a white mask, which was a parody of blackface of the day. And so, you know, very subversive, very subtle, but very in your face. Yeah. And, and Super, Bong, Super Bong was in line with that philosophy of what they were trying to do. They weren't trying to, you know, tiptoe around sensitive issues. And, you know, I guess they found out very quickly that Australia wasn't ready for it because they got cancelled pretty much instantly. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Aboriginal people, we had to wait 40 years, and Australia had to wait 40 years to get another Aboriginal-driven sketch comedy show. Mm. And, you know, there was um, famously Ernie Dingo would pop up on Fast Forward and Full Frontal as, but, you know, one man. Mm. Um, mm. The next one was Black Comedy, which is only a couple of years old. Yeah. So, yeah, we had to wait a full 40 years to get another run. But... Super bung, as much as that is a word I wouldn't actually say in any other context. It's a word that I would just, you know, it, it might as well be the N word for Australia. So, and that, but that for us, I think it's very outdated. It's not a word that you actually hear even racists say that word anymore. Yeah. It's kind yeah. of, but at the time it was a very commonly used yeah. racial slur. Welcome to Colour Television. As far as illustrators and uh, Aboriginal writers of comic books go these mm. days, do we have any? Yeah, they're out there. Um, sadly, probably not getting as much work and recognition as they deserve. But like I said, clever man, Ryan Griffin was the brains behind that. Um, so I think he's probably the most successful Aboriginal writer who's actually created superheroes and put them out. Um, I'd love to see a comic or graphic novel series yeah. of that come out too. So hopefully yeah. they can explore that world a little bit more through that uh, medium. Brenton McKenna, who um, one that I actually missed in the first run and added... Uh, in an updated version of the article, yep. did Ubi's Underdogs, which is set in 1940s Broom, and is this really cool mix um, in graphic novel form. There's a few of them out there, bringing in elements of Aboriginal spirituality and Oriental spirituality. And so, you know, there's they talk to the spirits here, and you know, Chinese, like Broom, for those who don't know, like right up top West Australia. Mm. Um, so a lot of interaction with Asia over the years, and that history goes back you know, well into the, before the 40s which is when it's set. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she's got a, a little gang of uh, people of, of different cultures, so a little white kid, a little Asian kid, a little everyone, and she's the boss of them, this tough little girl, um, and they're called the underdogs, and so they get into all sort of really cool old, you know, Tintin-style almost adventures. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and he's great, and like I said, I mean, the fact that I missed it, and I, I was out there looking for him, um, says that, yeah, it was, it was a bit harder to find than it probably should have been. And Certainly so, not enough recognition, but I, I mean, what a great storyline is to have yeah. all the, the, the heritage and, yeah. and the histories yeah. and everything combined and, and, and work together. And probably something we could mention or look at down the line, if you're uh, an Indigenous illustrator or comic book yeah. reader, then by all means, please get in, get in touch with us. We'd love to feature you and have a chat and, mm. and see what you're doing out there. Um, Luke, excellent. Thank you very much for, for coming along. And again, if you know of any other comic books or comic book series or anything that would align with what we've been talking about today, we'd love to hear from you. By all means, get in contact with us through Facebook. The details are on your screen now or through Twitter and, uh, and you can get in contact with Luke that way. Luke Pearson, thank you very much for your time today. Really appreciate it. Happy Australia Day. Happy Survival Day. Happy Survival Day.